Yes. <laughs> okay. What else do we? What's that? What is that? Yeah. I see? So we have a lot. Have a lot of things for so show and tell. I love <laughs> so, it. Well, first, um, you know, so I'm kind of the the data person within mm -hmm. the coalition. So I wanted to show off our really cool indicator reports, which are online. Dun, dun, dun. In case you just want to do a some Christmas reading, <laughs> uh, there is uh, quite a bit of data in here to show you what's going on in our community, oh, yeah. some measures of progress over the last 10 years and some areas where mm -hmm. we uh, need to improve. Another time to come and learn about our current metrics would be at our annual brunch, which is December 12th. December 12th. Uh, at the Verizon Event Center from 10 to 12, and we'll be talking about you know our current mm -hmm. metrics, what's going on, and, and what we really need to focus on in 2019. That's not far. That's it's not. Right off of Little. It's not, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's, it's free okay. brunch. It's exactly. free brunch. Who doesn't like and free food? To learn. Two of my favorite things. Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, so that's, um, those are these two things. Okay. And then I have a few other show and tell items, but I don't know if one of you wants to talk about our Stomp Out Stigma campaigns or anything like that. Knowledge is power. Whether or not you live outside of Pasco County or you are local, knowledge is power. Just educating yourself, and it may be a lot to read, but even if you just learn a fact or two and just take it and word of mouth it, to a friend or family member. Yes. That's all. That's just so, as Monica was talking about, our Stomp Out Stigma campaign, mm -hmm. um, we kind of started with the SIN um, committee and we decided to do um, postcards. And it's like a What postcard. does SIN stand for? Substance Exposed Newborn. Okay, community. okay. I don't know if I asked that. Okay. So, um, we came up with a campaign and we have, um, at a lot of events, we'll have like a little drop box mm -hmm. and we'll have this poster or even a bigger poster hanging up and basically it just explains that we like for um, our community members to write words of encouragement to those that. who are suffering um, or dealing with um, substance abuse mm -hmm. and or um, misuse and um, what they do is these cards that are written um, they're basically words of encouragement, mm -hmm. and it can be from someone in recovery or just anyone out in the community to write the cards. Words. Yep, yes, and then those are kind of delivered to um, people mm -hmm. or moms that are giving birth. Mm -hmm. um, maybe at one of the hospitals, we've had some taken mm -hmm. over to our local hospitals at um, Par, our other community mm -hmm. partners, just different places, and um, it just provides like encouragement and kind of breaks down that barrier of stigma where um, there are people out there who are rooting for them exactly. and um, just kind of gets rid of that stigma and breaks it down. I love that. You never know how far a kind word can go. Absolutely. You don't. You never know. So be kind. I love that. So do, do you individuals have to wait for that or if they wanted to just drop off a stack of postcards with Absolutely. Unix, oh kind, they gosh. could do that? We would take that it. Would that, yeah, okay. that, that would be amazing. Okay. That would be amazing. All of this information, guys. I'm throwing a lot of it today. Yeah. I, that that's something you guys know I love that I get all kind words just whenever so send them to me yeah. gotcha mm -hmm. right? I love that. I love so that. another thing we do with parents is as our kids age is we talk about alcohol it's one of the mm. most widely used drugs in the country because mm -hmm. it's legal you know and um, if you're over 21 and so what we talk about is if you have somebody under 21 <laughs> lock up your alcohol monitor your alcohol and um, make this pledge on how much alcohol you'll have in the house and how you will monitor it. So we try to get parents to join a pledge um, that they will talk it up, so talk about alcohol with their teenagers and lock it up. I love that, which kind of ties into the 9 p.m. routine, hashtag 9 p.m. routine, lock it up. Yeah, I mean, it's alcohol, but lock everything up. Lock your doors, your alcohol, weapons. Be yeah. safe, be mindful. So They're very smart. It's a great segue into uh, something we just invested in. We used to invest in lock boxes for prescription medications, but those were pretty expensive and it wasn't <laughs> very sustainable. So we still really want to encourage people to secure their medications in their home. So we've invested in timer caps. So basically, here you can show uh, the, the camera, that you can see the last time this medication bottle was opened, which one will help people use their medications according uh, to the way that their doctor has We're prescribed. Not focus. That's really cool. But yeah. two, it's, it's a great way to see if someone else has been in your medicine cabinet, in, in your prescription pills. So okay. when we're talking about data and we're looking at data, we saw in 2017 a record high level of kids ages 10 to 14 and then 15 to 19 attempting suicide with medications. And it was really whatever they had available. Um, there was that and then there was also adults, older adults who were also attempting suicide with the medications that they had available, 
one of the main ways that people access medications is through other people's medicine cabinets. So one, to really help stem the tide of the opioid crisis, two, help to keep our children safe, and three, help keep our seniors safe, is to monitor your medication. So we do have these available. Are they, how do you, how do individuals get this? So are they free or are they? They are, we always provide items for free, uh, free of charge. Okay. Uh, right now we are partnering with Pasco County Human Services to okay. distribute them to the, the family members that we've identified as being highest risk. Okay. Uh, so we always work with our community partners. We're also working with that. the health department to make sure that we are giving out to Terra bags, which are a way to dispose of your medications I love that. Uh, in your own home without having to travel. So and go to one of the drop-off locations, yes, which, which we also we have three in the county, I believe. Oh no, we have seven. Wow. Uh -oh. Okay. I need to educate myself. We have seven. <laughs> That's and we we post about these quite often because we get a lot of messages about people asking how to dispose of their medications yeah. and if they can bring them to us. But I always refer them. I used to refer them to the one of three, but we have seven. Mm -hmm. So I will also give this information to you guys as well. But I like that. So the bags though are individuals still coming in person to pick those up as well. We don't want anyone coming in person to, oh. to pick that those things. Do up. not come in person. Well, <laughs> because we're not. I, we're not here all the time. We're in the community, oh, so we true. give these yeah. things to our, our community partners. So if you Two want thousand. one, you'd go to the health department where okay. they always have okay. people there to got give you. you. <laughs> got you. Got <laughs> you. Yep. So yeah, that's how we use our community partnerships. Okay. We all come together and mm -hmm. figure out, you know, who should get this information, mm -hmm. who's going to disseminate it, what do we want to invest in, what are the biggest issues that we solve. I love that. I love yeah. that. We can also partner with your HOA or okay. the neighborhood yeah. associations or your church group mm -hmm. if that was something that you wanted to get that those Zotero great. bags out to. What else do we have? Well, we do, you know, everyone wants to talk about the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. And I do want to just emphasize that we don't love that those words. We don't mm -hmm. love the words opioid crisis. We okay. much rather talk about it as an addiction crisis because okay. it will always evolve. And we're already seeing it starting to evolve. But um, if you know somebody who is at risk for overdosing from an opioid. We do have some information. We created these brochures. Uh, this was a different committee. There's Substance Exposed Newborn Committee, and we mm -hmm. have other committees in okay. the coalition, uh, and one of them created this brochure because basically the number one reason people die from opioids is actually time. It is the time, uh, so it's actually time. It's, um, we have the antidote to reverse uh, an, an overdose and the issue is whether or not that drug is being used quickly enough to save a life and basically okay. what we have found is you know of course people are often using drugs with other people uh, those other people don't feel comfortable calling law enforcement because they're scared they've been it, using the they're, they're scared of what's gonna happen uh, and we just want to educate everyone that we do have the Good Samaritan law here in the state of Florida so if you are calling in good faith to save a life you are essentially given immunity. It doesn't matter if you are on drugs or if you have drugs on you. There is, a, you know, if you're trafficking it's, it's drugs, a different story. It's a different story. But, but for the most part, uh, you know, we, we want to make sure that everyone is, uh, is calling 911 to, to make sure that they get that drug. And just to clarify, the Good Samaritan law might be different in different states. Yes. Oh, okay. knowledge is power. You're welcome for this video. I know someone out there will benefit <laughs> from this. I know. What else? Is there anything else you can do? I would say, so we have a conference coming up okay. on May 14th yeah. <laughs> at the Saddlebrook um, Resort in Wesley Chapel. It's a really great, um, it's a great conference to get in your schedule. Mm -hmm. It is, we keep it affordable so that our local community can attend. Awesome. Um, we have a great speaker this mm -hmm. year. Um, he's a survivor from the Columbine shooting okay. and talks about how he used my pain medications not only for his physical pain but for his emotional pain. And he talks all the way from prevention to mm -hmm. treatment and recovery. Um, so we're really excited to get him here in our community and talking to That's us. Awesome. And we'll have great breakout sessions mm -hmm. and a great opportunity to network with everybody that's in this area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rolling credits of just information. That's what, so we have the brunch coming up December 12th. Mm -hmm. This will be out before then. We have the conference, which is May 14th. 14th. May 14th. Mm -hmm. So it's like a day long conference, mm -hmm. basically, okay. Great. If you're a student, if you are a professional, you can get CEUs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just a great opportunity to figure out what all of our roles are mm -hmm. in solving the addiction crisis. So everyone has a role. Exactly. And this is the opportunity to learn what it is and bring it back to your communities or your home. I love that.
Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. I hope you all enjoyed getting to see and learn the information today uh, with the three women that I brought to you from Pasco ASAP. Um, I know I threw a lot at you, but if you just take one or two things that you learned from this video, I know that it will help someone out there that understands how big of a problem that this is and how we can work together to stop this. That's that. I'll see you next time.